Hallelujah. This is Grace Life Komi Podcast coming to you under the umbrella of Chimdeona Ministry International. You are welcome to this episode. May you be blessed as you listen. God bless you. Praise for another opportunity is given unto us. Today is the 12th day of the family, the home. Uh, the journey thus far has been awesome and we give God all the praise. I uh, will take a chorus before we proceed into our study. Uh, so we we'll go from chorus to uh, prayers and then uh, we move into our study for today. Amen. And uh, we're going to be singing More Love, More Power by uh, Michael W. Sweet. Praise God. Mala Mo power of you in my life Yes, Lord. Thank you for another time of fellowship in your presence again. Thank you for what you have done the past 11 meetings. Yes, Lord. And for this 12th meeting, we give you praise and glory. Yes, in Lord. Jesus name. Amen. We ask that you teach us, grant us understanding that we may be. Yes, Lord. We ask for insight, we ask for revelation. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We uh, began um, our study. Uh, this for this week, still from the book of Genesis chapter 3. Uh, yesterday we looked at, um, I think, from verse 10 to 12. Praise God. Uh, today we'll proceed from verse 13. Verse 13 says, And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. Praise God. This is a very uh, important, um, you know, uh, part of this scripture that we can o- not also overlook. Praise God, uh, because uh, we said some days ago that God, uh, we all have to be accountable to God as individuals, you know, and as partners, we also have to be accountable to God, you know. So um, accountability cannot be taken out of our role as uh, children of God. Praise God, and even as uh, man and wife. We have to be accountable for how we run uh, the, the, the vision of the Godly home that the Lord has you know, given us the opportunity uh, to run. Praise God. Uh, you don't, fa- you don't, you don't um, take it as normal, okay, or as that is what it should be uh, when you find yourself establishing a home. Praise God as, 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 a, as a person. Because there are many people that, uh, I would just say, they are better than you, but they are not yet settled in a home. So when God gives us this opportunity to be married, we must count it a privilege and do 
you know, um, the vision of God in our marriage is praise God. So the, we see here the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? God wants us to be accountable. God wants us to take responsibility for what we do. Praise God. And we see the woman saying um, exactly what happened. The devil, the, ser the serpent began her and she ended up eating what he told them not to eat. Praise God. So, uh, indirectly, uh, what I did is uh, I, I listened to the devil and um, the end of it was that uh, I disobeyed. Praise God. And, uh, yeah, though it was a wrong um, action, and, but I think uh, I give her kudos for being open, you know, for being transparent with God as to what she did. Because here we see that God, though all-knowing, you know, but he didn't uh, put himself in a situation of um, pointing fingers at her. Why did you? You know, instead he asked, What did you? So, most times the devil wants us to believe that God is going to keep asking us, Why did you? Why did you? Uh, because the why did you is the reason why men run away from God. Because they feel they cannot amount to anything, God cannot accept them. Uh, they have done a lot of bad things, they keep doing a lot of bad things, you know, and they feel that they are not worth it at all. God. There are a lot of better people that God can, uh, you know, consider. That's why did you is what the devil portrays to people as uh, the question that God asks, you know. But it, it, look at looking at what the first set of humans, you know, the first set of people that are made with image and likeness, uh, the, 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 even after their disobedience, looking at the question he asked them, he didn't ask them question in the light that he was, you know, ready to trust them. Exactly. Which just shows us that our God is a God of love from the beginning. It, it, it didn't come with, with um, a demanual and with um, an approach of Staff to punishment. The yeah. yeah, it didn't come to punishment and the hammer approach. Mm. It came with an approach of say, say what is in Isaiah chapter 1. It says, Come with us, reason together. Mm. It came with the approach of let us reason together. Because the questions that were asked were, were questions for reasoning. Yes. Not questions as it were to which hunt or to exactly. use the hammer. Exactly. Okay, what is this that you have done? Mm. What have you done? It's a question that comes to the heart of love. And okay, let's let's find a way out of this. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And um this is the same way God comes to everyone. He comes to the heart of let us reason together. Let us reason together. And look at it says he asked the woman, and the Lord said of him, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent began the eye to eat. Now, God asked him, what have you done? He did ask her, what has the serpent done? What have you done? Simply, I ate the fruit, and I gave my husband to eat. That is what she did. God was not, as it were, interested in what the serpent did yeah. compared to what his own children did. And this is the way God responds to us in every situation. You know, he was he's more concerned about us, what we did, what we do, what we don't do, than what the devil is doing around. Yeah. He didn't come around asking what the devil did. Because if she understood God's approach, the devil was inconsequential in this situation. Mm. But here she comes again and she, she, she responds the same way Adam responds. Adam said, the woman you gave to me. And then, the, and then Eve says, the serpent began. The blame game continued. Adam began with the blame game. Eve took over from the, uh, with the blame game because actually Adam paid the precedence for that. If Adam had said, um, uh, I ate the fruit too, and he took responsibility for eating the fruit without blaming the thief. If he had said, uh, The devil beguiled my wife, yeah, and since my wife had eaten, I had to, <laughs> since we are one, I also ate whatever. If he had not put the blame on God, yeah, exactly, and, and on, on her, the woman. And on the woman mm. There is no way the woman would have put the blame on the serpent. Mm. One thing we must always know is that 
in every family, the, the woman will always be um, a continuation of what the man does. The man started to blame him. What do you expect? The woman entered the dream. For her, this is the best way to respond to God. After all, she, he, he was the one that got her later. So he was the one that was first talking with God. So he knows how best to respond so to if God. He's talking like if he's talking like this, I have to follow suit. I have to follow suit. Mm. He's an example for me. The, the, the leader is always the example. And so she just followed suit. But look at the person. God was not asking her, what has the devil done? He asked her, what is this that you have done? God would always be concerned about what we do, not what the devil is doing around us. And also, you must understand this. In our families, the Bible says to pray the the serpent to bite. When the serpent comes to bite, God does not ask the serpent to bite your mouth. He knows the serpent is eating it. He actually knows that they were naked. He knows what God was about. God. He comes to ask, what did you do? That means that even when we are dealing with um, cases where people have, you know, have broken the edge, what happens is that we start looking for what the edge was that was broken. So that we can mend this man, and then the serpent will not have the, uh, the entrance to what the, 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 the way to come into the family. So usually, until we do something, the devil cannot do anything. Yes. That is why God asks her, "What did you do? Know mm. what the devil did?" And that is the same question whenever we have challenges in our marriages, whenever we have challenges in our relationships. That's the same question God will ask us. Mr. Man, what did you do? Mr. Wo- Mrs. Woman, what did you do? Not what the devil did. The devil cannot find his way in if we don't do something that allows him in. And blaming the devil for what you did is not the answer, is not the solution to what you did. Yes. So when God looked at the whole order of events and he said that oh the man has played the blame, after he actually even blamed himself. Mm-hmm. He blamed you. And now the woman has blamed the devil. You see, they shared it equally. Mm-hmm. The man blamed God. The woman blamed the serpent. Now she blamed the devil. And if you look at when we want to run away from our responsibility, is that these are the two approaches we take. Is that we are blaming God or we are blaming the devil? We never blame ourselves. That's how we, we always run away from taking responsibility in life. We are not blaming God or blaming the devil. Or oh, another person. Or oh, another person. You know? And society, look at society today. You, you hear, you see, they are not blaming God. They are blaming devil. If God is alive, if God is good, why will people be dying the way they are dying? If God loves us, why will people go to heaven? And then in that okay, the devil is the cause of God. But we, we forget to blame ourselves. For many of the things that we do, for example, you know, issues of uh, uh, natural disasters that when we over, over tax the end, and the earth begins to react, we begin to blame the earth for the reactions of the earth. Whereas, t- long before now, the earth was not reacting like this. And, and the, the book of Romans makes us understand that uh, the, the, the energy of the uh, creation is uh, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God, meaning that uh, the, 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 manif- the manifestation of uh, the children of, the, of this world, you know, has continued to make the other creature, creations or creatures, you know, grow. They they are not happy with the evil that keeps increasing. They are not happy with the diverse, you know, actions and demonstrations and all sorts that people have continued to engage in. That is why they react with earthquakes, uh, disasters, and the rest of no, the rest of it. Yeah. God have mercy. Yeah. Okay. Right. Since um, this happened, the guard me. So she put herself last and put the serpent first. You know, just like um, when Jacob was traveling, when I was coming back, I told him this was coming. And he put less <laughs> children first. And the concubine children first. Then the next was the good Rachel children. Then the boy in Africa is like, I can't imagine a man that's supposed to be in front to face the heat. He put all the, he wants the children and the wives to face the heat first. So they kill them, please, you can run. You see, that's always a responsibility that fear brings to us. And this response of it also shows a large level of fear. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. When God comes to us like this, He's not trying to make us afraid. He's still coming to us to reason together. They've been reasoning with God for a while. 
Why would you know his mind? Yes, sin makes you afraid of God. But the purpose of sin is to make you afraid of God and run from God. But the real truth is that when you are afraid of God, that means you do wrong to God. That's how you call for grace and mercy to find So I think that's also one of the things that um, uh, the sly and the crafty um, you know, the characteristics of the devil. Uh, that's what he does. Kind of, he glues fear to the believer. Yeah, he glues. You just, you just, you are afraid of everything. Yeah. And so he, he tells you not to, don't just divulge it because he just gives you a lot of fear. He gives you a lot of fear. Yeah. To even talk to God, you don't open your mouth, you don't even tell him. In your closet, don't talk, you know? So he makes you afraid of uh, opening up to your help. Yeah. So that, 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 that's the situation that they both found themselves. And fear, the Bible says fear torments. Mm. Every relationship, just ensure sure that fear does not come in. Mm. I remember once I was talking with somebody, I was chatting with them, I was like, is anybody in life? And I was like, yes, but you know, she's actually, that she doesn't really know because she doesn't know the guy is really you know, ready for the relationship and it hates my life. She's, she was just, this period and I like you as I like, free. And I asked her and I also got something. Perfect love. I said, I said if this is God's perfect love after everything we do, all of you should be afraid. You shouldn't be afraid. Once fear comes into your relationship, watch it. Something a door has been opened. And that door has to be shut. Yes. If the relationship is of God, once fear comes in, it was you have to shut that. Both of you have to intentionally shut it down. Now, if it's a man, when it's a marriage, once fear comes in, you are open the door. Shut the door. Or else, you begin to blame the devil instead of telling God what you have tried to do. And God is not, let me say, is more, is more concerned about you than what the devil. He knows the devil is going to pull out, pull out. Seeking for this. What the devil, what the devil did, what he's doing, and what he remembered is not news to God. Yeah. It's not news to God, you know. But he's more concerned about what we do, how we do it, what we don't do, how we respond to the devil's temptations. He's more, he's more concerned because we are the ones that he invested into. You know what I'm saying? And so we should never be afraid to tell God. What we did, or what we did, not starting up the conversation with what we can do. Praise God. Yeah. Okay, so we now move over to, or oh, you still meant to say about uh, verse 13. Yeah, okay, so verse 14 says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Praise God. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think this one is, uh, you know, very explicit, okay? Because uh, it, it means that uh, whatsoever that serpent was, it was standing at, at some point. Yeah. But after this course, it's now, it's now calling. Yeah. It's now uh, switching on the floor. Yeah. Aside that, there's this word dust, okay? It, it's, it's something we must not ignore in this verse. Uh, man was made from dust. Yeah, okay. same dust. Yeah. From the same dust. And so it tells us something. Uh, the old serpent has been reduced to dust. Okay? Yeah. Meaning that the fallen man is of the same caliber with the, the cursed serpent. So that the shall now go and dust shall not be torn. Yes. So it's more of they are sharing space. Okay? So when we fall for uh, the beguilement, you know, the, the deception of the devil as believers. We are positioning ourselves to suffer what uh, the meal, okay, of the devil. Yeah, we become the meal of the devil. We become the meal of the devil. Yeah. And when we look at the word dust, uh, which is the word afar in the Hebrew, it says uh, dry earth, dust, powder, ashes, earth, ground, mortar, rubbish, okay? So um, it, it means that the worst case is being a rubbish. So when, as a family, you refuse to go on with um, operating with the wisdom of God, 
if you come down to operate with the devilish wisdom, all you can produce as a family is rubbish. Yeah. Nothing good can come out of you. And you remain a meal of the devil. Yeah. The devil can take you out at any time. He can destroy you at any time. He can steal from you at any time. You know? So this is one thing we have to be careful about as believers. And um, those who are actually seeking to pick up the character of God family say man you have anything to add on that yeah that 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 says it all you know the lord tells you very well because of what he has done mm. um what you need to realize there is this god knew what the devil did mm. if reiterated it the lord knew it from the of what the devil did now um like i said what when the lord asked if what have you done Question he asked, What have you done? But because he knew what the devil has done. Mm-hmm. And he wanted it to by herself, see what she has done. Mm-hmm. But she included the devil. And so the Lord began by cursing the, the serpent here. Yeah. And it says, He told him, You are cursed above all cattle and above all every beast of the field. And then it says, Upon your belly shall you eat, shall, shall you go, and dust shall not eat of the name of the man. Now, because of the serpent was. It says you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast. Now, this statement makes us understand that other beasts were not cursed, but only the serpent was cursed. And his curse was extinct above every other animal. In other words, the curse made it, the curse made it glaring that the Lord had released a curse on us. So it was so blurry. It was something that you know you you, you cannot you, you, you cannot uh, mistake. It says it tells you you are cursed above all, above all of them. That means if you are single-handedly cursed, brought him out and for a cost. And it says upon your belly shall be cursed. And calling upon upon the belly, you see, um, the serpent calling upon upon his belly. It kind of reduced it from the benefit of using the hands to now having to depend on some motion features in the belly. Mm. And it now had to have direct contact with us. Mm. Direct, direct contact with it. Now, even look at animals that move on falls. And look at animals like the, like the um, centipedes and the rest. They don't have direct Belly contact with the earth. Yeah. Because they still have some tiny legs. They have of. their tiny legs um, that, that, that elevates them from the earth mm. and prevents them from having direct contact with the earth. Mm. Now, and um, that actually gets them a little elevated from the dust, which was, as we go forward, was cursed. Mm. So there's a little elevation. But the serpent, that, the serpent in this case, was just on the earth. So there's no elevation from the cause at mm. all. It's just directly on the cross net. And that makes it, let me use the word, um, at the mercy of the cross net. Mm. Now, imagine if the uh, um, if the earth, the cross earth, um, becomes so hot, it cannot move because it has to use its belly to move. Mm. Others may just quickly go and, you know, they may, they, 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 with their force, they, with their force, they can only run and grab something, but it can't move at all mm. because it's on the earth directly. Mm. That's a direct contact, co- a contact with us, and that was what came on the serpent a direct contact with the cross, mm. the cross earth. Mm. The consequences for Pigari was a direct contact with the cross earth. That's the reason why any any family that opens itself to the serpent. You break the edge by any means open yourself to the serpent. You are bringing, you are allowing what has direct contact with the cross coming to your family. Mm. And what else will you bring into your family? To bring curses. You can't, you can't, that one is non negotiable. Mm. You see, we say, oh, we're blessed, we're blessed. It's just like see families that say, oh, we're, we're blessed. Our union know, was blessed in church. How come we're experiencing situations that look like us? What did you, what did you, what, what did you allow me? Mm. Which edge did you break? Because the serpent has direct contact with the, with the cross head. 
So when it comes, it carries it comes the contact it has and brings it in. Yeah. So you might have been blessed by the biggest man of God in your city. But if you opened your home to, to call it. it's going to come in with what it has contact with. Yeah. And that is the, the cost end. It will come in with the, with, the, with the cross. And you begin to experience the manifestation of the cross in that though we are blessed. Mm. This seed gives reason why we must ensure that there are no cracks, there are no edges that the serpent that, that are broken, that the serpent can have access into our lives. Mm. Very and uh, also, I I um I want to believe that okay, um uh, the deception of the devil okay he came with deception of um uh, I I want to believe that the the other fruits in the garden you know that God told Adam and Eve to eat were fruits that he himself could not eat. Since uh, from study we discovered that angels possess that knowledge of good and evil right so more of it was his meal and he wanted the perfect man the very good man to eat of his own meal so i am I'm, I'm just trying to believe that in his deception he wanted to bring man to his level but god in his omniscience brought him down to the to his worst state yeah, that is why he no longer you know had the power to eat the not the good and evil anymore yeah he now eats dust. Yeah. Yeah. He now eats dust. Yeah. This is the reason why, as believers, we have to also be very careful because um, when the devil eats dust, he's eating dust. When you dine with him, you're eating dust with him. Exactly. When you roll with him, you're rolling in rubbish too. Yeah. Because he cannot offer anything good anymore. No. That knowledge of evil, uh, good and evil that he had. That archaic one, the old one, is still what he still possesses. Exactly. Since then, he never ate it anymore. So he, he has lost that um, opportunity, let me use the word upgrade, yeah. <laughs> in good and evil. Exactly. Rather, he's eating dust. He's eating dust. He's eating dust. And the dust he's eating is the cost earth. The cost earth. And, um, uh, All he can spill out is curses. Okay. All he can dish out is curses. Uh, as we go further, I'll begin to see more to that. Mm. Um, to say more to that. All right. Um, Verse 15 says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise the head, thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Do uh, you want to speak a little of uh, that? Basically, this has to do with um, this was the first promise that God ever made. Mm. The very first promise that God ever made. And this was the promise of the uh, Redeemer, in the, uh, Redeemer Messiah. And that is Jesus, who was to bruise the head of the serpent, and uh, the serpent was to bruise his head. Um, the heel of, his, of Jesus was bruised by all the, um, the passion from when he was uh, beaten, blindfolded and beaten, to when he was called, and then the crown of tongues on his head, and then hung on the cross, and the side was pierced. Those were the bruising of his heel. But, it, but when he bruised the serpent, then when he said, It is finished, and then let's start. And that was. And, and that was when the victory of salvation was won for every everyone who believed in the finished work of Christ Jesus. Mm. Now, the the, the, the the new creation is family is to follow the order of the finished work of Christ. Mm. That is what the family of the new creation is to follow the order. Now, in that light, we have crushed the head of the serpent. We have crushed the head of the serpent. Now, we may experience sometimes some bruising of the heels, of our heels. Are you getting know what I'm saying? Yes. For example, maybe some one or two financial issues sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so every one of us, family, we have seen that uh, there are times when it looks like, man, you are believing God seriously for the finances. Some of the times, the children, you get know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they are training, they, they begin to bring up attitudes that you have to stand your ground in the place of prayers. You know, one or two challenges. There is no family that is free of challenges. Mm. Every family, every new creation family, every child of God, our families one of the one have may have one challenge or the other. Those are the little little bruising of the heels mm. that we may experience. But we have an assurance. The assurance is that we crushed his head. Amen. So 
this is what we should work with as a family. Mm. That the head of the serpent has been crushed. Mm. He may try to bruise our heels with some little challenges. He may try, but that is not as important as the truth that his head has been crushed. Mm. So we need to keep enforcing our victory in Christ. That the head of the serpent has been crushed. No matter what we see, we keep enforcing our victory in Christ that the head of the serpent has been crushed. Because as we go along the way, we're going to be seeing the two bruises of heels. Yeah. We're going to be seeing them, one or two, one or two bruises of heels. You know, we've seen them, you know, um, 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 the man of God once said his daughter was attacked by the spirit of death. And he saw the way the whole matter was. He left her and went to the place of work, to his office. As he sat up in his chair, he said to the people, and said, no, there must be a way. Mm. There must be a way. He said, and he, was, and as he, and he said that two hot scriptures came into his spirit. He said, and he rolled on his chair, and he declared them, and the spirit, the spirit of death was um, sacked back to him. What am I going to say? That was a bruise on the heel. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. But he enforced what? The crushing of the head. Mm. The devil will come time and again to bruise our heel mm. in marriage, in our family, mm. in our relationship. But we must time and again enforce the crushing of his head. Mm. Jesus crushed his head on the cross. We must crush his head. You know, funny enough, it took longer hours for the devil to bruise the heel of Jesus. Mm. You see, from when, when they arrested him to when they blindfolded him and they were hitting him, telling him who, who is hitting you. To when they scourged Jim, to when they brought him before Pilate, you know, and then when they, 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 they nailed him on the cross, when, he, when there was thick darkness for three hours, he was groaning. See that the bruising was long, are you yes. getting what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the end, he shouted, It is finished. Mm. And that was the crushed, the head crushed. It looked like, you know, the way we act, watch the movies those action movies where the hero and the villain, the villain will beat the hero, beat the hero, beat the hero, beat the hero. But at the end of the day, somehow, somehow, the hero will just one blow or one kick and he just finishes the villain. That's the way it like happened. It looked like devil was having a few day. But when Jesus finished him, finished him once and I don't know who we're talking to them, but it's like your family has been experiencing so many bruises. Oh, mashata so many bruises. So many bruises. And it looks like the bruises are taking long. In Jesus, it looked like his bruises were taking long. Mm. From Gethsemane, it looked like his bruises will not end. Mm. But you know what? On the cross, when he said it is finished, mm. all the bruises ended. Mm. And the devil's head was crushed. Yes. We come with God's word to you today. Mm. We come in prayers for you today. Yes, and Lord. we decree God's word to you. Amen. Yes, it is your time to crush the head of the serpent. Yes. The bruises are over. Amen. It is time for the head of the serpent to be crushed. Yes. The bruises have stayed this long, but they have not killed you. Mm. Because you are the one to crush the head of the serpent. Ah, so in the name of Jesus, we exercise authority in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we enforce your final and absolute victory in Christ. Amen. And we decree, crush the head of the serpent. Amen. Concerning that child that has gone wayward, mm. crush the head of the serpent. Amen. Concerning that health issue in your family, crush the head of the serpent. Amen. Concerning that marital crisis, crush the head of the serpent. Amen. We decree and declare, in accordance with God's word, mm. that the head of every serpent that has been bruising your heels mm. thus far, they are crushed once and for all. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, what a word. And I trust God that uh, your testimonies will be rolling in uh, shortly in the name of Jesus. Uh, so we'll go on to verse um, 16. Uh, but before then, I just want to also let us, uh, you know, bring to our, our, our mind again the place of, uh, you know, consequences for every of our action. The woman began with the with the devil, yeah, with uh, falling for his beguilement. So uh, she couldn't run away from receiving uh, as the first person to receive the consequences for you know her actions. So um, we must be mindful of our actions in marriage. We must be you know careful of our actions uh, as singles because there will be consequences. Praise God. Uh, okay, so verse 16 says, Unto the woman is said, I will greatly multiply the sorrow, uh, thy sorrow and thy conception. I 
will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Praise God. Hallelujah. God says, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. It's it was, you know, it's unfortunate because um, uh, a garden where they were supposed to forever enjoy pleasure, yeah. you know, uh, became a place where they began to, their season of sorrow began. Yeah. Um, this is what, um, you know, falling for the slyness, the craftiness of the devil can do to, to a believer. So we have to be very careful. We have to be careful so that um, the garden that God has prepared for us to enjoy our life, you know, in marriage, you are meant to enjoy your marriage. But if uh, you allow the, the 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 wisdom of the devil to override the wisdom of God in your home, then you are positioning yourself for sorrows and more sorrows. It will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. Yeah. When you begin to see cases of sorrow in your family, then you need to wake up. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a call to wake up and, yeah. and you know, begin to, to assess and analyze check around where are the places where we have allowed the wisdom of the devil to take uh, you know uh, take room in this in this home and begin to ad, you know address it so that the sorrows will not continue to multiply amen because of the finished work of christ we are not meant to experience sorrows in our home and so shall it remain for us in the name of jesus then he went further to say that in conception also that conception uh, it will multiply, it will, I will greatly multiply thy what? Conception. Praise God. And conception speaks of physical conception, you know, uh, pregnancy. That's the word um, heron in the, in the Greek. Praise God. So to bear with child. So, so from, in the Hebrew, sorry. So uh, according to God's plan, you know, even after the fall, man was still, was still meant to continue to multiply and, and, and replenish. Do you understand? So um, the cause was not to stop the flow of God's blessing. Yeah. You know, as it was from the beginning. Yeah. Multiplication, replenishing was still meant to, to continue. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Although um, this time around, uh, sorrow is, is, is in place. Yeah. So you can imagine multiplying in sorrow. Yeah. You can, you can try, you, you, you try to, um, you know, um, Take a picture of uh, you know all these um, areas where they're suffering um, hunger, you know severe hunger, and then you see children. You just see children everywhere. And you're wondering, with the hunger, how come they are still thinking of bringing more children in to come and suffer? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. This is what the fallen states has um, given to man. Yeah. You know, they multi you have to multiply even in sorrow. Yeah. You have to keep multiplying even in the hardship. Mm. It comes with it, so uh, we have to be very careful. You know, as believers and um, raising our godly family, we shouldn't. There's, we have no reason to have sorrow. You know, attached to our multiplication and our replenish. Yeah. You know, if you have six children and four is four are, four are dead or four are in prison. It's it's more of multiplying in sorrow. Yeah. May that not be our portion in the name of Jesus. And it goes further to say, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So, um, I don't know, you want to continue from there? Okay. Um, it's, you know that it says, to the, it says to the, unto the woman he said, I will really multiply the soul and conception. Mm. Now, it says, I will really multiply the soul. That means, the, onset, the initial plan of the was for them to be the soul. Yes. Yeah. But now, because of what the man has done, mm. he has to multiply her sorrow mm. in conception. Mm. And so he, he, he multiplies her sorrow in childbirth and in conception. And so if, 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 you, if, 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 you, if you look at it, it, it looks, it says two words, I will multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. I will multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Mm. Your conception is, you know, the, 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 when the woman takes in and the nine months you know, like the way stay people at the, at the point they begin to tell them pregnancy is not another sickness. Mm. But you see, the, the discomforting situations that the woman goes through mm. in the period of 
conception is as a result of this song. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, that she went that was not the original plan. But because of the form, woman had to go to this and it says the sorrow shall not bring from that you that bring that comes in with the pain that she mm-hmm. bring from. But the initial uh, 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 intent of God was not meant to be any, any song. So why? Because the Bible says the best of God may get rich and I never saw. That's it. God blessed man just for all this to be blessed man and there was no song attached to it. And I mean, this scripture really, uh, you know, buttresses that uh, that scripture. Exactly. You know, conception, childbirth, no sorrow at all. Mm-hmm. They were blessed. But now they had altered conditions of the blessing. Mm-hmm. Although the blessing, like you said, still goes on in childbirth, you still give them, you still give them, mm-hmm. but they had altered some conditions. Mm-hmm. And so, so they attracted some sorrow toward. Childhood. And then, if you look at another thing, that this was has to do with the woman, with the woman for her condition of childbirth, that's both conception and it. And now, it also there, there was also a word for the woman concerning her and her husband. Mm. You see, uh, because she was beguiled, she had to, she had to face the consequences of it personally, and as a means with her husband. Mm. This is what happens whenever. Um, um, a person chooses to uh, ask force for the deception of the devil. Mm. It's going to deal with both you and it's going to deal with you and someone else yeah. in a relationship. Mm. When a woman falls for the deception of the devil, it's going to affect her person. Mm-hmm. It's going to affect her and her husband. Mm-hmm. You cannot see the husband being moved from the picture. It's going to affect her and her husband. Mm. Yeah. And that's why we always um, cry for um, and to tell women to be sensitive. Married and everything like because it will affect you, it will affect your husband. Mm-hmm. It actually affected her children too because these children is what they usually go without song, yeah. But now they have to call the song. The song. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So the action of sometimes it looks like okay, the, 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 the man is everything rises and falls on the man, the leadership, the family, and the marriage. But you see, the woman also has a key and vital role to play. Look at only her actions, see how many people it affected. Mm. It affected her, it affected her relationship with her husband, and it also affected the whole of marriage. The whole of marriage, know? childbearing mm. process. Alright, so it's very serious. Don't think that the devil's began when the devil be so we have to say it's my life. It's not your life. It's not your life. It's not your life. There are people affected. Mm. There are people affected. Even if you are not married, there are people affected. Yeah. Why do we tell people not to commit suicide? I will tell them, come please, even if you feel you are single and nobody's been affected. For heaven's sake, you have parents, you have siblings, you have friends. Mm. There are people affected. Yeah. So you can't just say it's my life. And whatsoever we do, there are seats. Yeah. So it may look presently like you are alone. Uh huh. You don't have uh, people uh, physically attached or you are responsible for. Yeah. But you've planted a seed. Exactly. That w- whatever happens, if it's 10 years time or 20 years time, you, st- you begin to have seeds and you begin to have a family. These things you begin to you sprout. Uh, yeah. You know, so, very important. And then he says some things, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Mm. You see, from in creation, when God created um, the man, he said, yeah, in Genesis 1, he said, it was not good for the man to be a man. And then in the city, it, took, it, it was a deep thing to follow the man, and he took a side from the woman, which is a weed, from the man, so he used a weed, and then he created. Um, a, a woman had brought him to brought her to the, to the man, and the man called. You see that the man called her the bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Mm. Now they were of the same material. That means they had what you call a mutual desire. Mm. Their desires were at the same level for each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it was a mutual, um, a pilgrim desire. The man had for the woman. The woman had the man, why? Because he saw himself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there was nothing like, you know, she, she's 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 lower than him. Like right? he saw himself. He saw his same material. You know what I'm saying? But now after the fall, God comes and tells you, my sins your desire shall be for the man. Your desire shall be for the man. Before the fall, there was no God. Both they, were, they both desired themselves. Mm. But after the fall. Now, it's one person that now has a desire for the other. Mm. The 
world desire there is a, is a um, Hebrew word, teshukah, teshukah. And teshukah means to desire, it means longing, it means craving. So, it means a sense of stretching out after. The, the Bible says, if you look at chapter 2, it says, For this moment shall the man leave the father when I cling to his wife, and the boy shall be born with his clean means to chase the wife, we learned that before. Mm. But now, here comes a, a, another book in my time. It says, Your desire shall be for the man. In other words, you will not be the one that will start Chasing. stretching out after him. Mm. You'll be the one that will start longing for him. Mm. Be the one that will start craving for him. Mm. Be the one that will start desiring him. That was not the original intent. The four brought this out. This According to the original plan, the man thinks. But now, the four makes the woman start desiring. And even women, who we've heard of people, you know, um, they say they don't need men, you know, feminists, and every of that. You see, those things are covers for this desire. They are cover up for this desire. They are serious cover up for this desire. When they tell you, it don't, because it's a falling nature that bears this desire. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. You even see that when it's, you see that even when women say they don't like men and everything, they don't want men. When they start getting to a particular, it's over that this desire it springs up. It was it was as a result of the fall because they know that oh, the, the desire comes in different lights. I need to have a child. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I'm not complete without a man. Um, it just comes in different ways. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And then they begin to see themselves capitalize on it. And before you know it, it begins to turn into something massive and big. Mm-hmm. This was not the original plan. Mm-hmm. But the four led to this plan. I was to, somebody went to me, it was like, a guy she was a, a man she was living to get kind of like, the relationship to work out with them. It didn't work out. And because she told herself she just wants now is a child. Any man that come and pregnant and she has a child. That's still the, the desire. Mm. <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even with the IBL thing or whatever, the desire is still there somehow. Because a child still cannot it's not uh, designed to replace uh you know the need for the man. Exactly. You see? So this was what the four brought about. By then, it was meant to be a mutual desire. Mm. But the four made the desire one side. To me, it's no more balanced. It's no balanced. Family <laughs> oppression is no more balanced. It's no balanced. And you see, some of the time, you see that even some men take advantage of this. Yeah, so that means that even the four, you know, you brought about, um, you know, extreme. An extreme. Okay, so you see that? One is actually um, longing, and the other is who cares? Or, you know, one is excessively who cares, you know, and the other one is, well, I choose to suffer, you know. So uh, there's no more balance in the family. No uh, the emotional state of the family lost the state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, so that's what the four brought. It brought about an imbalance. Yeah, imbalance. Imbalance and the imbalance was serious on the woman's side. Mm. She began to desire the man. If, if we use the net version, we can read the net version of the same scripture uh, to give us another light into it. Says, so the woman is said, I will greatly increase your labor pains. Mm. With pain, you will give birth to children. You want to control your husband, but you will dominate. That's it. So, so it now creates also the four created a situation of control and domination Dominion, in the home. Dominant. You see, uh, look at the, the second passage, and you shall rule over you. Mm. You see, um, the word rule there is mashal in the Hebrew. It means to rule, to have dominion, to reign. Actually, in where God blessed man, he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish it, and then then subdue it. And it says, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. Man wants to dominate only the fishes of the sea, the fowl of the air, and, all, and other creeping animals, you know, lion and the owl of the But before, added the woman to 
that wisdom. That's it. According to the blessing, she was not in that list. So more of her, the consequence for her action was that since she didn't exercise her authority to dominate the devil, you know, she had to lose her, her ability to dominate the devil. Yeah, she had to be God. Anything she had to be like getting into the class of the devil. Of the devil. Yeah. Now, now she's not sharing the same space. Yeah, sharing, sharing. So since you will not dominate, okay, bring the domination. You will kind of yeah, 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 kind of a situation. You now, you now go and be those that are being dominated. You can't. You can you imagine um, uh, a controlling servant trying to control his master? No matter how control, how control freak you are, you cannot control your master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. best you can do is control your co servant. Yeah. But to come and control your master is not possible. Yeah. See, so so the, the original plan was fall of the air, fishes of the sea, mm. creeping things. And the serpent fell under the category of creeping, creeping things. things. You know what I'm saying? You know. But by the fall, Eve added herself to the category. Mm. She was not under fall of the air. Mm. She was not under fishes of the sea. Mm. She was not on that creeping thing. She was on two, walking on two. Mm. But she now added herself to the list of any of this of, of these to be dominated. So there was now a, a fourth category. Man dominates the woman, which is the truth. And you see, this is why you see the, the, the it was from here that the male dominant thing began. Mm. If you check the Hebrew tradition, it is there to every tradition, mm. every tradition, it is there. The male dominant thing is there. It is a. But if you read, if you read through history, you discover that it's even now that women are having opportunities. Exactly. You know, before now they were either considered as um, rags, you know, considered as um, furnitures, you know. I mean, bad furniture. Not even kids. Exactly. Kid is kid is wife and there's nothing. Nobody will say anything. You know, so they were not regarded. As, as humans, even though they had blood running in this. Even though they were on two, two broken on two feet. Mm. Yeah, because other people is out there. Mm. All the fetishes and they walk on two like yeah. Yeah. Yes, and we made the same material, but this is what the fall does. It can degenerate a person to the lowest. Mm. You see, so when you see a dominant man in a family, he is working with the full mentality. Mm. You see, you don't dominate a woman, if you want to work in God's original plan, you are not a dominating. Woman. So, say dominating and controlling spirits in the family yeah. is not, uh, you know, a, a proof that um, the family is running on that template of, you yeah. know, that God has designed for the yeah. family. It's a proof of the falling, the falling, the, um, the falling uh, family, the falling man. So, when you want to control, when you want to dominate, and you see, visually. Uh, when a couple get married, this is what they begin to that's what they begin to fight for the first few years. Mm. When you are in courtship, you don't this also is not there. When you get married, the woman subconsciously she wants to control, like the net says, says it. She wants to control her husband. And the husband wants to dominate her. Mm. That's the fight for the first one year, two years, you know. And then three years, and then later on, if they are wise, they begin to balance it. Mm. You get it. The reason for that initial fight is because some of them, some of marriages, they get into marriages without the template of the God's original plan for marriage before the fall. Mm. So some of them, because we read books, we read books, we read uh, different materials, but we don't understand that even with what you read, if you don't have the original template, we have seen material. We are blessed. Mm -hmm. Nobody is to control anybody. Mm -hmm. Nobody is to dominate anybody. Mm -hmm. We want to control and dominate this fish we control. To dominate. Marine, uh, Marine Kingdom. Marine Kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, the House of the Air. House of the Air. Which is their fly. <laughs> and, then, and then terrestrial forces. forces and those are the forces we have to control mm -hmm. and dominate. Not ourselves. 
So this, this, this also brings us to the fact that we have to be careful with the various counselings and the advices we are giving us as believers. Yeah. Because uh, when, you, when you understand that, when someone begins to tell your wife, kneel down before you give your husband a drink, uh, husband, uh, do this before you do that, wife, do this before you do that, you are, you are working, you are trying to, uh, you know, to adjust the, the family pattern of the falling family, exactly. you know, to bring it to the godly level, but it does not work. You cannot mix an old wine skin with a new wine. You know, I mean, you cannot mix an old wine, you know, uh, trying to fit it into a new wine skin. Mm -hmm. That's what the scripture says. You cannot try to bring in the, the conditions of the fallen family into a godly family and expect the family to be intact. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be. It's either you are removing dominating and controlling forces atmosphere you know systems and operations from the godly family or you are not operating the godly family at all yeah that's it you choose one you have to choose it you have to choose one you have to be sincere you choose one and th this is this is um, where a lot of Christian families have issues issues this you have to choose mm. and you you, and the best way to do it is to, from the onset, know that these two things are going to be different. Mm. Don't let them come in. Mm. They are symptoms of the falling family. That's it. You are a new creation. You are a child of God. Your family is not falling. Your yes. family is, according to the blueprint that God has from the onset, mm. your family is blessed. You have the same material with your wife. Mm. So both of you, 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 you have left your father and mother, you have to cling to your wife, and both of you become one flesh. Mm. And you enjoy the provisions of, you know, the one flesh. Yes. One flesh, in one flesh, there will be no control freak, no, there will be no dominating freak. In fact, what brings about cancer? Cancer is when some cells choose not to die. Mm. So they are not trying to control the environment around them. Or dominate, and they what's happened? They begin to grow bigger than other cells, and they cause problems. Mm. Once the cell refuses to die, when it's meant to die, mm. and it begins to control and dominate, before you know, they start spreading, mm. it brings death to the whole body. Mm. So when there's a the presence of the falling family symptom, which is control and dominion, is a cancerous relationship. Mm. Mm. It will die in no time. Mm. Once you see the symptom, use the fire of, of the Holy Ghost chemotherapy. Yes, 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 yes. Cut off, cut off that. But when Jesus said, He said, if your hand comes to sin, cut it off. May that for you to go to heaven with one hand, that for you to spread eternal damnation mm. with two hands. Cut it off from your family. Cut it off from your marriage. Nobody should be a control freak, nobody should be a domineering freak. Cut those symptoms off when they are trying to use of the head, and then use the fire of the word of God. Chemotherapically destroy every remaining cells. You see how peaceful the marriage will be. Praise God. Uh, it was such an uh, another great time in God's presence, and I believe that we're ending on a good note. Uh, we, we have to remove every traces of dominating and controlling from our family. When we do this, even the children will, will have a better environment exactly. to, to you know grow well and um, uh, be nurtured properly. Because of time, we will not continue on this uh, aspect. We may have to do that from tomorrow. Let's quickly have a word of prayer as we end today's meeting. Lord, we thank you for such a great time of having your presence again. We've learned again. Mm. We ask that this word will appear to your parents. Yes, Lord. We will use them in our marriages. Amen. We use them in our families. Amen. And we will produce marriages that are pleasing and acceptable to you. Yes, Lord. And we will God this seed for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for your time. God bless you. Have a blessed day. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available, to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number, 33 Swift code, M.
B, G, H, G, H, A, C, to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana, you can send to account number 033254551-2017. To give in Naira, you can send to Ecobank Nigeria, account number 554102-0592. Also, for further enquiries, you can call us on plus 233-54594-7132. OR, send us an email via ministry at gmail.com. Today, remain ever blessed. You're out there, you've not made Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. Um, I would want to invite you to make this decision. It's the best decision you can make in your life. And I encourage you to do it. Now, if you want to make this decision, please say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you died for me. And on Calvary Street, you shed your blood to take away my sins. Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. I make you my Lord and personal Savior. Because you chose me, I choose to serve and follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you, Lord. I pray for everyone who has made this decision. Thank you for receiving them in the beloved. And thank you for giving them the grace to serve and follow you all the days of their life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Beloved, thanks for listening to Grace Life Komi Podcasts. We believe that you've been blessed via this episode. We request that you also remain connected to us via our other social media handles on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and YouTube. We are Grace Life Komi on all these platforms. Also, for more information about the ministry of Pastor Chimdi and Funke Oahuna, kindly visit chimdioahunaministry.org. You can also send us your requests and testimonies via email today through chimdiwahunaministry at gmail.com. We are dedicated to feeding your spirit man with spiritual meals that we edify, equip, and engender your growth in the knowledge of God. Remain connected to Grace Life Komi. God bless you. Jesus is Lord.